Hey guys, what's up? Bargman Hubble here. So, real quick, today we're going to be talking about the video game based on the 2016 Ghostbusters movie, you know, the one with the all-female team. Now look, I know there's a lot of strong negative feelings associated with that movie with a lot of people, okay? But I really like that movie, so if you don't like it, that's fine. I respect your opinion. All I ask is that you be civil, both to me and to other commenters. Just because you hate the movie doesn't mean you're allowed to hate its fans. Cool? Cool. Now let's get started. When there's something strange in your neighborhood, who you gonna call? Luigi! Get out of here, you darn kid! Aww. Hey guys, what's up? Bargain Hobo here, and well, it's terror time again. You know, Halloween. Or as we call it, Hoboween. You know what, it's just that time of year for the spooky stuff. Now, this year we're looking at a Ghostbusters game. Which one? This one. See, Ghostbusters has had a lot of video games to its name, you know? It's had the 2009 one that was awesome, then it had the NES one which was not awesome. So where does this one fall? Is this Ghostbusters team a legend or a laughingstock? Let's find out. It's time to hobo up! The story for Ghostbusters follows a completely new team. These four inexperienced but eager Ghostbusters idolize and admire Abby and Aaron's team. While that team is off achieving greatness, these noobs are stuck here waiting for the phone to ring. One day, it finally does, and our Greenhorns must battle ghosts across New York and earn their place as legendary Ghostbusters. The story is pretty good, though I imagine the studio didn't have the money or the likeness rights for the movie's team, much less to bring them back to voice their characters. Or maybe they were just busy or even uninterested. Regardless, these four newbies will serve our needs just fine. Gameplay for Ghostbusters is a twin-stick shooter. The four Ghostbusters are always in play, either controlled by you and the three friends, or AI controlled. Each Ghostbuster has different stats along with a different gun and grenade they use. Shooting causes your gun to heat up, so you gotta make sure you tap the left bumper to cool it. If it overheats, you won't be able to shoot for a little while, which could leave you sunk if it happens at a bad time. As you play, you'll find ghost energy, and the game is really generous about giving it to you, especially when you find the many, many secret areas in the game. There are sigils that can be lit up with your PKE meter, which can either just give it to you outright, or reveal haunted items that give you energy once you defeat all the ghosts, or open secret areas that often contain collectibles. If you keep your ear to the ground, you can amass lots of points and level up. On top of that, each stage has four hidden goodies, save for the first stage which has one, and the final stage which has none. Finding all the items in the level gives you even more ghost energy. You have some help in finding the secret areas by holding the B button. This projects a marker on the ground that shows which way you need to go, making it easy to figure out which ways are the optional paths that lead to the secret bonuses. Save for the final hidden goodie. I had to look that one up. Yes, our heroes level up too, but it's annoying because only human controlled characters get any level ups. Once I learned this, I settled on just one Ghostbuster, and only at the end did I realize that was to my detriment, but we'll get back to that in a sec. Speaking of characters, they don't have names. Some might see that as laziness on the developer's part, but for me, I think it's meant to let the player have some free reign over their experience and give the characters names they feel might fit them. Once I found that out, I gave them names so I could refer to something aside from the fat guy, the action hero, the scientist, and the punk girl. When we start our adventure, our heroes are slow and not that strong. That's why it's important to level them up and give them a fighting chance. These noobs need all the help they can get. The first level is a short, single stage affair. Use this tutorial to teach you how to play. After that, each level has two stages. Between hunting the larger ghosts, you get to square off with a ton of smaller grunts, as well as the bigger, tougher ghosts. Once stronger ghosts have had their health drained, use your proton wands to catch them. Move the right stick in the direction shown on screen, which can change on the fly so be ready. They run around randomly, and on multiple occasions they can even fly in circles, making it annoying to fill in the meter. Once the meter is full, you pull the left trigger to slam the ghost down. Enough slams, and they can throw out the trap. Mash A as fast as you can to build up the meter. The higher the meter, the more ghost energy you earn. These ghosts can offer a challenge as the game goes on, and sometimes you can get overwhelmed. If a character loses all their health, another player can revive them. If all four players are knocked out, it's game over, and you either go back to the last checkpoint or quit to the map. It was on the final stage that I realized my error in only leveling up one character. The others weren't strong enough to bail me out when I was getting knocked down, and they were getting knocked down quite easily, so I had to go back and level everyone else up. 
I'm not sure what level cap is, but I only got to level 10. A trick that made this process faster was to play through the stage like normal, put the boss in the trap, then connect three more controllers so the other players can actually get the experience points when I finally hit the box. I got back here with all the characters level 10 or higher, and the final level was much easier. I didn't die once. The final level of the game is a boss rush. You refight all the bosses again, plus enemies from that level. Get a checkpoint and a health pack for each one. Also, the health packs give full health for all team members. And then, you fight the final boss. After that, you win. Once you finish, you unlock remix stages. Go back and play through levels and bosses, only now, they're harder. Sadly, this game needed more time to cook. There are glitches everywhere. Once I had a character get stuck behind a shut door. I wanted to reload the checkpoint to get her back. I've also had characters flat out disappear and force me to connect the controller to bring them back. I've also had the game hang multiple times. I've had characters not shoot when the right trigger was held down, but probably the craziest glitch I had was when the game softlocked with the first boss. What I was supposed to do was switch to my proton wand, but I've been using that the whole time. Since the game started me with it, I didn't try to press buttons and just switch to another weapon. When I did switch to it, it would let me shoot, so I had the boss floating around randomly and my team yelling at me to use the wand, but the game would let me do it. The game was softlocked. Now I can see why this game has the reputation that it does. After the second set of levels, all the trophies for completing levels are rare. But honestly, I had a pretty decent time with this one. Regarding presentation, eh, the game looks alright. The graphics are colorful, every Ghostbuster has their own color shot, which is cool. The areas all look distinct and are awesome to look at. Voice acting is cool too, but you'll be hearing a lot of the same banter over and over again. The music though, that's the brightest part. The game makes liberal, and I mean liberal use of the Ghostbusters theme. Oh, so that's where the money went. On top of that, the music was composed by Grant Kirkhope, aka the guy who did the Banjo-Kazooie soundtrack. And honestly, I hear Banjo-Kazooie bleeding through sometimes. The music is really good, but I was wishing for more. Tracks get reused a lot. Also though, the art for this game is really good. The little pictures you get for the loading screens, like seriously, I don't know who drew those, but they did a really good job. I hope they got paid in more than just exposure for the work, because hot dang, man, they have a future. Alright, that's Ghostbusters on the Xbox One. How is it? Let's look at it and see. How's the gameplay? Eh. I mean, the glitches do hold it back, and it is annoying how only the human control characters get the experience points, but aside from that, it's not that bad. The levels are a bit long, but you know what? That's what the sleep mode is for. Honestly, I think this game is like, the people are mean to it, you know? But it's not that great either. And the presentation? I mean, that's better. I mean, it's cool how every character has their own colored shot and the backgrounds all look cool. Also, the soundtrack by Grant Kirkhope, awesome, but need to be longer. And the liberal use of the Ghostbusters theme. So, you know, it's fine. It's not great, it's not terrible. You know what it is? It's decent. Well, that's going to close the book on this year's Halloween. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell and like notifications. And also, I made a Discord server. The link to join is in the description. Come on in. So, come back next month. We don the suits and shades and pick up the guns once again. Till then, this is the Bargman Hobo saying be brave, dare to play. I'll see you guys next time. Hobo out!